What is driving record rents? Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein, let's have a look at this article from Domain. So sure and all, two factors driving record rents, record rent rises. We've been talking about this again and again, just it seems to be a common topic at the moment with just rent prices. And I like to bring up this chart here. Hang on, I'm showing you. This is regional New South Wales rent. We can have a look, you know, north coast. Well, northern regions, not inland, not on the coast, but you can see that sharp increase from rent there. And I'll just bring this up. A three better is now seven hundred and ninety-two dollars. Where just some time ago, you know, you're sitting around six hundred and fifty. So up two hundred bucks. Bit of a climb, guys. It's going to be a lot harder for people to afford that, and that's why people are well, they're being priced out of the areas they grew up and where their families from. So record rent rises across Australia are being driven by two factors, shore and ore. Coastal areas in many regions are home to rocketing rents as a result of city dwellers pursuing sea changes in places that are less, less population and COVID dense and trying before, you, before they buy. Now that is actually a brilliant solution. If you are thinking of making a sea change or a green change or a change anywhere, Try before you buy. Rent for six months and give it a try, even if you're going to the country. How many real estate agents have shared in the comments on, on the videos we've done here where people have moved out to the regions, six months later, they're selling the same property they just bought. Mining towns, on the other hand, are continuing to surge on the back of strong resource prices. When you look at the top 10 areas for rent increases, it's all either coastal holiday areas or resource town. Town, says Domain Chief of Economics, Dr. Nicola Powell. I think this is the time they'll be showing their biggest increases too, as it's the biggest change over time in rental prices for the holiday season, so they'll be at real pressure points. So what are the top rental movers and shakers around Australia and why? So we've got Crescent Head in New South Wales, median rent. What the hell? 680 bucks annual, annual, What? 54.5%. What the? What? Shit. Crypto and shares eat your heart out. On the McLean Valley coast, 340 kilometers north of Sydney in the Kempsey Shire, Crescent Head is still between the ocean with a world-renowned surf break and the river. Over the past two years, it's grown from a sleepy uh, beauty to a fully-fledged princess as more and more people left big cities for the fresh air of being by the sea, especially as COVID-19 has proven both a cure and a boon for those dreaming of zapping the commute and working from home. We're just, we've just had so many people coming here to live now, both renting and buying, said Nathan Wilson of Elders Real Estate Crescent Head. It's been crazy. Many of these people have been coming here for their holidays for years and or have just discovered it. A lot of them have realized they can work remotely, so they can live here in a beautiful place with eateries and the kind of facilities a small town has. Fortunately for the locals who often rent for years at a time, property owners have tended to honor their commitments and haven't put their rents up to market prices yet. Yet. It won't be long. With 50%, guys. 50%. That's insane. Here's another one. Borley, you said 750 bucks annual rent, 50%. On the south coast between Batesman Bay and Moira in the oh, Euro Bodala region, 300 kilometers from Sydney, this is a favorite spot for those who love outdoor life and favorite holiday destination for Canberrians. It's a real magical area with a beautiful beach and it's close to the ACT for visitors, Dr. Powell said. With such extreme rates for rental growth, though, you have to ask where the locals will still be able to afford to live there. No, they won't. 50%. This is, this is nuts. Imagine your rent going up 50%. Imagine if this happened to mortgages, the outrage that there would be in the media. would have mortgage keeper back. The government would be stepping in to save us. Shit. But then the question has to be asked, how much of this is permanent growth? There have been reports of people in the cities going back to the cities. And it might just be this growth happens during the period when the pandemic hits the hardest. Yeah, it could be. Hopefully it is. Mount Coolum in Queensland, 47.1%. Sunshine Coast favourite, Mount Coolum, encompasses many distinct areas. 
and the staggering rental growth has mostly been driven by smaller sub-sector, sub-sector locals say. That's just insane, guys. The exciting part is right on the beach, where the locals call the boardwalk. And rent growth, there is driving increases for the whole area, said James Henley of Richardson and Wrench Coulomb. We've definitely had so many people moving here from elsewhere in Queensland and a lot of interstaters from Melbourne and Sydney that prices have risen. It, I think it makes it reminds Sydney siders of their northern beaches but with a much more relaxed lifestyle and it's close to Noosa and Maroochydore but more affordable. So here we go, the South, South Headland in Western Australia, median rent 588 bucks, annual rise 47%. Resource prices are still rising so people continue to keep... Uh, to be keen to move to the Pilbara South Headland, a suburb of Perth, Port Headland, to work for iron ore industry. I remember we designed some <laughs> modular hotels that were going to be going there years ago. <laughs> oh boy, it's been a while. With borders snapping closed for a long time, it means there's no fly and fly out workforce. So everyone has either had to buy properties or rent them. This has in turn put unprecedented pressure on rental prices. Resource areas are generally showing a significant rise in rents as a result of mining doing so well, Dr. Powell said. Vallecluse, Sydney, median rent 2900 annual rise 45%. With COVID-19 lockdowns making everyone realise how important lifestyle is, there are still some who prefer to stay in Sydney, but it, uh, if they can afford it. Live in some of the most uh, sol- salubrious areas. Vallecluse in the eastern suburbs is one of those. It has its own little beach, it's a good compromise rather than going down the coast, said Dion Markovics of Rain and Horn Double Bay. It's always a very lovely place to live, and there's been a lot more demand than supply. In Double Bay in Sydney, 2000, 42.9%. Queenstown in Tasmania, $250. That's pretty cheap, but it's a rise of 42.9%. The largest town in Tasmania's west, Queenstown, was once the world's richest mining town. Now there are studies to see if it might be worth reopening the copper mine with resource prices soaring so high. But a strong tourism sector is growing to replace the mining income with the recent opening of a number of mountain bike trails. The town is becoming much better known to outsiders looking for a place to escape the cities and the pandemic. Prices have really continued to rise with people wanting to go to smaller areas and get away from the coronavirus, said Rodney Triffitt of Harcourt West Coast. People have had enough of lockdowns in the cities, and until our borders open, we are we were coronavirus free. We've had so much demand for properties and very low stock, which has been pushing rents higher and higher. Port Hedland in Western Australia, 851, 41% rise. West Gladstone in Queensland for units, 250. South Hedland has gone up. Bundle in Queensland on the Gold Coast, 800, 895 bucks for bundle. Bundle of all places. Come on. A suburb on the Gold Coast, on the Narang River, just behind Southport, Bundle, is considered by many to be a picturesque and relaxed place to live, with a network of canals creating waterfront homes and beach cafes and shops nearby. I just think of Bundle as the place to go to Harvey Norman on the Gold Coast back in the day. With rentals in hot demand, it is also home of the Gold Coast Turf Club, where the Magic Millions Carnival is held and a new cultural precinct is being developed for those who want to live on the Gold Coast. It's quieter than surface and the CBD. So there we go, everyone. Just rents are soaring. So let's, let's have a talk about this one. Hopefully, this is only going to be a pandemic burst in rental costs and won't remain long term. But we'll have to see, guys. We'll have to see. Some of those increases are insane and just beyond the reach of normal people. Anyway, thanks for watching. Check out this last video about rents going up 250 bucks in a year. That doesn't seem, no, seem that bad now with other, with other rents going up nearly 50% in a year. That's just crazy. Take care, guys, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.